Okay, well, we're back in the shop because it's cold outside, so I can't be outside. Well, I can be in the garage, but I don't have parts because my poor planning ability means, well, UPS isn't here yet. So, uh, finishing up, this summer I did a uh, video, which you can click somewhere in the description, but I'm too lazy to actually find it. Um, Fuel injector sizing 101. So this is fuel in, or fuel system sizing 101. This is fuel system signing 102 because we're gonna go through the pressure demand from like the hose sizing um, perspective. Basically what I sized here was showing you how to size a pump based on a diagram with a horsepower goal depending on like the fuel and uh, power requirement uh, from a couple online sources. So what we're here now is, so you know how much fuel you need flow-wise, and you know what your chart looks like. You want to design your hoses and filters to be able to supply as little of uh, pressure rise as possible for your application. So like I said here, this is a 42 PSI base system. We have a relatively efficient system that has six PSI of loss, and we have 10 pounds of boost. So we have 58 PSI at the uh, rail. And really the example here I wanna show is that if you run this pump at the true 13 and a half volts, this 450 is big enough for your E85 car with 560 flywheel horsepower that'll run, you know, your mid to high 10. But you have to get all this stuff right. Um, so this part is really, how do you get from the blue, the green line to the orange line? So how do you size your hoses and everything to no make sure that you have a big enough hose that's gonna flow the fuel you need without putting you know, the buy once, cry once crowd that wants you to put a three quarter uh, Teflon braided uh, super flow line in your car. You know, how big of a hose do you need? And really how I start with that is you look at your defined flow rate required, uh, which we're gonna say 100 liters per hour. I'm sorry, 100 gallons per hour or about 375 liters per hour. So what we're gonna do here is go over to the whiteboard. So first what you need to do is look at, you know, you got your 100 GPM demand. Well, we need to get this in units that we can calculate our flow velocity in our lines. Because really what you have is, let's go to the internet. There's basically two important things. Uh, what controls the line losses in a fuel pump is basically how turbulent your fuel flow is in the line. So think about it. If you got 50 people in a mall or at a stadium and you want to get out, if everyone goes in nice, smooth lines, it's the fastest. Now, if everyone gets, uh, there's a mess, it's slower and you're turbulent. It's, you can get more through more volume, more people, more fuel, if it's laminar than when it's turbulent. So really you wanna find how fast you can flow where it's laminar, you know, a nice smooth stream versus the rapids. And there's some rules of thumb for like thin water type gasoline, E85 diesel, uh, that you can flow some reasonable foot per second. And these really come from, remember that other equation? These, if I can scroll down here. Now, if you really want to get crazy, you can go get your PhD in fluid dynamics and you can study the viscosity uh, of the fluid, the Reynolds number, basically what that number is, uh, where it goes from laminar to turbulent. Uh, you can do all these crazy equations, uh, but really you're just wanting to know how big your fuel pump sizes are. You're not an OE engineer. You don't need to prove to your boss. 
uh, that you're not spending extra money. You just need a big enough system. So we're going to use this chart and say that if you are over this like pump process line and pump discharge kind of means we're trying to flow pressure from one source to another. We want to have reasonable feet per second uh, velocity of the flow of the gas flow. So once you get into this four, the low side of your gasoline or E85 is when it starts to become a little bit turbulent. So if you're under four, you're great. It doesn't really matter if you're 1.2 or 3.1. Uh, the loss is relatively unimportant at this low, below this low four foot per second range. Once you get this four to eight, four to 10, your losses start to get big. So if you end up with a velocity of four foot per second, your hoses are probably on the edge, but you're okay. Now, if you get into that seven or eight, you're going to have significant line or pumping loss through those hoses. And if you're over eight or 10, uh, that's very turbulent and you're going to take a lot of extra pressure to pump that gas from your tank uh, to your injectors. So, you know, when you're looking at your diagram, you want to make that orange line and that green line as small as possible, but you don't want to just keep putting bigger and bigger lines in because as long as you're under four, you're basically fine. So how you kind of do that is if you're over here, you know, your gallons per hour of flow, 100 gallons per hour, one hour is 3,600 seconds. There's 231 cubic inches in one gallon of uh, volume. So basically, if you have 100 gallons per hour, that fluid is flowing at 6.41 cubic inches per second. And your flow rate, Q, is equal to velocity times area. So basically, the bigger the pipe for that fixed volume, the slower you have to go. Uh, so basically, Q, which is 6.41 cubic inches per second, that's your flow rate that you want, that 100 gallons per hour that we established from the previous video, equals V, which is your velocity times your area. So what we're going to solve for is the area of some common uh, hoses. So 3 eighths, that's your dash 6, half, that's your dash 8, uh, and 5 eighths, that's your dash 10. Those are some of the really common sizes. And your hose... Area is 0 0.110 cubic inches, 196 cubic inches, and 0 0.307 cubic inches. And from a velocity, you get 58 inches per second, 32 inches per second, and 21. And if you convert that to feet per second, because you remember our chart on the computer is from 4 to 8 is kind of your like cutoff zone. Uh, your 3 eighths hose is already at five foot per second. That's probably okay. Um, you are going to have a little bit of loss, but it's not gonna be significant. You know, we had like a target of about six PSI of loss from your fuel lines and your filter. Um, you know, that's, that's probably gonna be okay. What we're trying to do is make sure that you don't have like 20 PSI of loss in your hoses. If you use a half inch, you're 2.7 uh, feet per second. And if you do five eighths, you're 1.75 feet per second. So like I said, it doesn't really matter. Once you get to half inch in this pump, you can keep putting bigger hose in, but you're just adding weight and cost, basically. Uh, you're under that four-ish threshold. Um, this four point will probably be fine. Uh, just to tell you, that's really slow. It's only like three miles an hour, just to put it in perspective. That fuel going from your tank to your engine is going at like a brisk walk or like a normal walk, actually. So in this case of the imaginary 3,500 pound car that's going high tens on E85, that three eighths hose is probably fine. Now, where it really starts to fall apart is, let's say you weren't comfortable uh, that your pump was going to be big enough, you're going to maybe run higher boosts. So you're going to go look at a Walboro 525. 
So if we look over at the chart, I have that up. You know, you're going to be maybe, let's say you want uh, 50 PSI. That's 120 liters or 120 gallons per hour. And I mean, if you're going up here in pressure, remember, maybe this application needs 100. Now, let's say it takes you 30 pounds of boost for some reason to get your goal. Uh, you've got a smaller engine, you take 30 pounds of boost, 40 pounds of boost even, if you're running like 40 pounds base, but you for some reason still need 100 gallons per hour, uh, your fluid flow is basically going to be continuous. So if you have a car that has maybe a three and a half liter-ish V6, um, you're running crazy boost at it to get the time you want, like a two liter turbo thing, and you need to run 40 PSI, uh, this 525 might be a great application for you to get that 100 gallons per hour. But, you know, we're going to say we want, for some reason or application, you want a little bit of headroom. We're going to do 120 gallons per hour because you might want to be running a low 10 or a 9 um, next year. So we're going to put a little bigger pump in. Well, that pump was fine with 3 eighths when you did 100 gallons per hour. Well, now you're at 120 gallons per hour, which is 7.7 .7 cubic inches, which is about 70 inches per second, which at your 3 eighths is about six foot per second. So you're getting into that range where you're probably still like borderline, but you're probably gonna be okay. Uh, spoiler, I have a 525 Hellcat Walbro pump in my Grand National swapped Buick with a 3 eighths hose. And I said, you know, that's fine because I don't need the flow of that pump, but it might see 20 PSI instead of 10 like in my supercharged LS car. I'm gonna see a little bit extra loss there, but the pump's big enough uh, where that four, the 400, 450 was borderline. So 3 eighths was still okay here. You know, that four to eight, four to 10 rule of thumb for the velocity. I'm still on the bottom side of that six. Where that really starts to fall apart is now if you have to do twin pumps. Now let's say you got a 5.3, you want to run high nines on E85 with higher boost. You need the twin 450s to get that flow. Uh, that's going to flow like 13 cubic inches per second. And I did a quick rundown of a 3 eighths, a half, and a 5 eighths. So you need like 10 foot per second of fuel velocity with a 3 eighths hose. That's going to be a lot of head loss, of pumping loss. So if you want uh, 40 pounds of base pressure plus 20 pounds of boost, that's 60 PSI, maybe 65 at the rail. The challenge is 65 at the rail. You might have 15 PSI of loss there. That's 65 plus 15, that's 80. Remember these charts on these 450s? When you flow very high pressures, it's kind of like the kryptonite to Superman. They lose all their power. So this acts like you're adding another 10 pounds of boost uh, to the pump, but you don't, you're not getting that out of the actual system. Uh, where in this case, looking at going up to a one size up a half inch, that's 5.45 foot per second. That's on that lower side of that range. Your loss is probably going to be insignificant. And if you go down to like a 5 ace, that's 3.5 foot per second. So really, as a quick recap, look at what your pump flow is required for your power goal. Figure out what the cubic inch per second flow rate is. Stick it through your Q equals VA equation and run a couple hose sizes. Um, this is relatively simple math. You can help, you know, you can do these little grids that help break down the units, gallons per hour. You say, you know, 100 gallons per hour, it's right there. You figure out your conversion factor. Well, I need to be in cubic inches per second to be able to solve for your velocity and your area and everything because your area is in cubic inches. So, you know, find your unit conversion. One hour is equal to 3,600 seconds. 231 cubic inches is one gallon. And you just cross out your hour 
hour, gallon, and gallon. And now you have 100 times 231 is a number over 3,600 times one, which is a number. Basically do your relatively simple math and you get your inches cubic per second flow rate. Q equals VA. You know what your area is from this chart. Velocity you solve for, so area is equal to your flow divided by your velocity. You have your area or your velocity. Solve that, divide it by 12 to get your feet per second, and use a chart. If you search for basically any chart online, what I just searched for is, now well, I'll go up to the big screen. Do, do, do. Pipe diameter rec recommended velocity. And I found this first chart wasn't the greatest. This BSI engineering company, that was this chart. So keep on that four to six side of that chart. That eight to 10 is really a warning of, hey, you need to put a bigger hose in. But basically, the nice thing here is it's showing that you can pretty easily size your hose for your pump requirement. When you get big pumps, you need bigger hoses, but it's a good way to say, hey, my three eighths or half inch is gonna be enough. Future proofing, if you know you want 1300 horsepower, you can use the equation that I provided to solve what your gallons per hour requirement is and give you a good estimate on what types of pumps you need and then solve your velocity. So if you got questions, you can put them in the comments. If they're intelligent, I'll reply to them. Uh, it's not simple. It's not really complicated. Um, it does help to have some experience doing the more math. If you're kind of a math based person, that's great. Um, if you're not, I can understand. Uh, it's not something everyone has. Kind of a good rule of thumb, a 525 Hellcat pump on a normal EFI boosted setup with Schmedium boost 12 or less probably about as big as you're going to go on a 3 8 Anything smaller, anything bigger than a 525 single really needs to look at a half inch. Uh, that twin 450s uh, is really common. That single half is about as small as you're going to get. Um, you kind of like each pump needs an eighth of an inch of line until you get stuff like three quarter. Uh, the three quarter, I didn't even do the math because you can flow like a mountain of fuel through. Um, chances are, if you're watching this video, you're not in that realm. So, hope that was fine. You hope you found that helpful. Uh, catch you in the next one. Hopefully, I'll be back out in the garage because I'll have parts and plans and things. So, okay. Thanks. Bye.